Chapter 4, Self, Society, Ecosystem The esoteric tradition doesn't give prescriptions on how to organize a society. Mentalities differ among nations and across time, so, the form of societies will differ. Yet, some general principles are given, from which one can deduce guidelines on how to proceed. This chapter will contain some of my personal views, although I have tried to look at things from many perspectives in order to get to a balanced view. I will discuss some of these succinctly while dealing with the topics here under. The money system. From the most basic considerations about compound interest and exponential growth, it can be deduced that infinite growth on a finite planet is impossible. The gap between the rich and poor is getting larger. Bad idea. The rich use much more resources than the poor. Bad idea too. Thomas Piketty has written a bestseller about it. The whole of the financial economic system should be redesigned so as to minimize the burden on the ecological system. Mike Maloney deals with the workings of our money system in his much acclaimed free video series about money and the Federal Reserve System. Especially, video number 5 deals with how money is created in our society. Ecological Considerations Agricultural soils are being depleted at an alarming rate. This cannot go on. Restoration of the soil is a necessity. Permaculture, food forests, soil regeneration and related methods come to mind. These have been employed with success already in some parts of the world. Climate change could mess up with these results, however. Peak Prosperity Course, free on peak prosperity. Come. The world currently uses billions of gallons of oil today. When the easy-to-extract oil is gone, it seems difficult to replace it with something else. When one studies the concept of energy density, it looks that a Green New Deal will fall short of its promise. Richard Heinberg is famous for his analysis of the energy situation in this world. The lack of sufficient rare earth minerals and the sheer amount of energy needed to mine these come to mind. The Long Descent, a book by John Michael Greer may prove illuminating to many in this respect. William Catton has written about overshoot which is clearly the predicament humanity finds itself in now. Joseph Tainter has written on the collapse of complex societies. All of this is very recognizable information. Lastly, Nate Hoggins has a channel on YouTube where he interviews many experts on these topics. Degrowth and Economics Ireland's Prime Minister has called for a steady state economy. This looks like a good idea to me. The equilibrium may well be at a lower level of prosperity, in terms of wealth, than currently is the case in the Western world. An increasing number of scholars are pleading for degrowth nowadays. It may well be that a simpler life also is a happier life with less stress. All our systems will have to be redesigned. Manufacturers must deliver durable goods, like clothes and other goods that have a long life cycle. Eternal growth on a finite planet is not possible. See William Catton's book on overshoot. A more regional-based production seems indicated. Some relevant economists. Michael Hudson, see Shefford Walwyn channel on YouTube. Jeffrey Sachs. Richard Wolff. Democracy at Work YouTube channel. In my own country, the Netherlands, there are some prominent figures involved with the transition to a resilient society. Jan Rotmans, transition professor. Bob DeWitt, Society 4.0. Wouter van Dyron, involved with Club of Rome. Artificial intelligence. Humans have become very dependent on technology. We have become slaves from our own scientific technology. The line is certainly crossed when we let algorithms take moral decisions. Yuval Noah Harari sketches some dangers that face us in the near future. He seems to be a believer in dataism. It remains to be seen how intelligent and understanding AI will become. My guess is that for a long time AI will not reach a high level of insight into human problems and ethical questions. It may split humanity in factions. Homo sapiens has become clever but certainly not wise. Biotechnology and Big Pharma. This is another hot topic. Will humans become cyborgs in the future? How far will genetic manipulation go in the future? There are many pitfalls here. 
one can point to the increasing dependency of humans on complicated forms of technology. Have we become slaves of our own technology? Big Pharma has a bad name. Not only can the results of many studies on pharmaceuticals not be replicated, there have been many court cases on the issue of opioids, fentanyl, oxycodone, etc. Bill Gates is persona non grata in India. Something to do with vaccines. There are now studies in preprint that show that mRNA vaccines are not very effective at all. Did I mention the many side effects of these vaccines? More and more of this will get to the surface and into the open. On YouTube, there's now a conversation between Brett Weinstein and Dr. Usim Malhotra about these things on the Dark Horse podcast. Also, watch the alternative media for information. Climate change. Perhaps the number one threat in the short term is climate change and habitat destruction. Ever more scientists warn us of serious disruptions in the near future. Paul Beckwith has a large number of videos on this topic. See YouTube. Let's hope that the Arctic ice doesn't melt very soon. You don't want too many self-reinforcing feedback loops messing up the climate. It seems, however, that humanity is in for a rude awakening. Geopolitics The world is now moving from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. The war in the Ukraine is a part of that process. Some of the causes for this war are elucidated by John Mearsheimer. There can be found many lectures by John on YouTube. Also keep in mind the Wolfowitz and Monroe doctrines and draw your own conclusions. Jeffrey Sachs also has commented on the history and background of this situation. Social Systems Charles Taylor is a well-known social philosopher who deals with many questions pertaining to society. Another writer is Charles Hugh Smith. See Kindle Books at Amazon. Come for his writings. Philosophy, Panpsychism and Ecotheology. Michael Dowd, ecotheologian, has had many interviews. Concerning Ecological Considerations. See YouTube, The Great Story. Panpsychism as a philosophy is clearly gaining ground in this world. In case you wonder, the philosophy I describe in this book can be classified as panentheism. The divine is immanent, present, in creation, but also transcendent to it. Psychological counseling and online groups. For those who are in despair about the climate situation and related possible collapse of society, Jem Bendel and his forum may offer some consolation. 